um, before. Maybe they had talked about it at mm -hmm. some level, but they hadn't. They weren't sharing um, credit cards or bank accounts. And so they get married, and so all of a sudden she has my brother's credit card, or or maybe they had just you know mm -hmm. decided that they're putting the bank accounts together, <laughs> or however it was. But they both knew. You know, one affects the other now. Okay. And so shortly after they're married, she comes... Oops. My uh, microphone fell off here. So she, shortly after they're married, she goes out shopping. Okay, my brother is home, I don't know, watching football or, uh, you know, thinking she's just going out window shopping. <laughs> Oops. I think she knew better than Oxymoron, that. Oxymoron, window yeah, shopping. <laughs> There's no such thing as window shopping. Uh, is, that is that true? You can have the you best. Can shop you have the best. There we go. There we go. Uh, right. It's like well, maybe just one thing. Yeah. I have more clothes than right. most women, so I don't know what I should say. So he, so he, she comes home, and she starts pulling things out of her bags. Mm -hmm. And she, the, the the one thing that my brother tells is that she pulls out this beautiful sweater, and it's for him. He says, Joe, look at this sweater. And he looks at it, and he and he goes, "Oh, how much?" Before saying anything, he's like, "How much was it?" Mm -hmm. And she goes, "I'm not sure." Oops. And, and my brother said, <laughs> "Wrong answer." Wrong answer. Right, 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 right. What do, you, what do you mean you're not sure? And she said, "Well, my mom, who's a great woman and um, actually quite frugal on a certain level, she said my mom um, always taught me not to look at prices." Mm. <laughs> because you should buy what you like and what you need, and you shouldn't mm -hmm. be deterred or motivated mm -hmm. by something as secondary as price. I wouldn't take her to a Bentley dealer. <laughs> actually, wow. actually, that is good advice because people <laughs> really? sometimes they'll no. look at something and they're like, oh, well, this sweater is only cheap, $30. So, uh, right. so Tiffany, there's some it. things it's I'd like for my birthday in two weeks. So I'd like to send okay. you. Okay. God made them man Ooh. and woman. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? Wow. We, just had a, we just had a conversation <laughs> and an understanding of the mind. Yes. That, so, that, that, that was a total gender mind, connection mind, there. Mind merging, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny, actually. Yeah. Manisha, what do you, what do you yeah. think? Is that... Whether or not, not that exact story, yeah. but is is that a trend that you see in terms of the way men deal with finances and women deal with finances? Is there a difference? You know, I I would say twenty years ago I would have found that to be a, a, a gender a, a conversation that would be divided by gender lines. Today, okay. with more and more women in the workforce, I'm finding it to occur, but it's just based on personality. Whether you're a saver or a spender, and it could okay. be the man or the woman having the conversation. Okay. And I see two things in that example that jump out right at me. First of all, thrilled to hear um, that there was not commingling of monies and, and assets pre-marriage. I'm a strong believer that that's a time to have ab financial abstinence right. is before okay. you commit. Agreed. However, once you do get married, one thing that is very important is to talk to each other about your money history. What are you, how, after you get married? Uh, as you're, as you're in the process before, while you're while you're point. courting. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. Um, I said before. Yeah, I, I I was not speaking clearly. As you're courting, you want to be understanding what were the influences as you were growing up. Okay. So in in this case, hopefully, it wouldn't have come as a shock to your brother that his wonderful wife was raised with this kind of advice and mindset. Right. Knowing that they could have together set a game plan, something as simple as. If it costs above X, we agree to talk to each other before it's bought by either one Great of us. Great advice. Oh, I like that. Great yeah. advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that we're, uh, how anyone in today's environment can a spouse <laughs> not looking at a price tag before, because they have sweaters that cost $2,000, and they have sweaters yes, that cost $30. but you $30, know which shops but, you're going to. If you're going to Barney's, look at the tags. But if you're going to maybe Banana Republic... You know, when they have Only just came out with a pair of four thousand dollars sunglasses. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. You gonna get them? Yeah, I own a pair. Of them. You're okay. Good. Let's look. Well, but this also brings up another <laughs> issue, which is you know some people place different value on possessions, and sometimes the the feeling people have around possessions comes from a very emotional place. For instance, right. they may have had a childhood full of deprivation or pain or angst, and so the possessions yes. are an uh, outward manifestation of something that's really important to them internally, and understanding yes. that as a spouse and helping them find another way to get those needs met without spending wantonly, that can be something you can do that will strengthen your relationship and your finances. That's a great example, by the way, and, and yeah. very true. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, great. What do you think about... Uh, 
how the recession has uh, influenced um, probably to the, to the negative, mm -hmm. but also perhaps in some cases to the positive, mm -hmm. um, finances within the family. I, have to say, I honestly think for marriages across America, the recession may be one of the biggest blessings. And I say that because it has forced people mm. to talk about money. We haven't had to deal with it when you could use your house as a piggy bank and you could run up balances on credit cards that came in the mail on an almost daily basis. Now with credit so tight, you have to manage your cash flow. You have to address the pink elephant in the room. And so it's not fun. It's not easy. I'm hearing a lot of tears and emotion, but I think five years from now, we'll look back and think this was a turning point that made our whole country stronger. Uh, a, a little story to your point, Manisha. I remember in college, a friend of mine um, was and had taken out a lot of uh, student loans, mm -hmm. so I, whatever it was, eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars at the end of his mm -hmm. graduation, wow. and he was dating a girl mm -hmm. who had equal or more debt. <laughs> and I remember talking to him like, "Isn't like a topic you don't necessarily want to bring up because it's kind of very base compared to love, you yeah, know?" Right, right. And but we had a couple beers and we're sitting around. I'm like, you know, because I knew her very well. A good friend of mine I said, "Do you know? Do you realize that she has?" <laughs> You know, I, and I knew he did realize, so I wasn't like breaking right, any secrets. Right, right. But and he's like, I know. But he had to think through these things wow. before they got married. Yes. They got married. They knew what they were getting yeah. themselves into. Right. Um, that's that. I think that gave him a leg up, right? And it really did. And again, Brother Jonathan, this goes back to something that you know. Again, I go back to when my parents got married 40 years ago. Couples did not come into marriages with 50, 80, 100 thousand dollars of student loans. Yeah. Nowadays, that's routine. We are bringing yeah. so much more financial baggage to our marriages, um, and that's why it's extra important for us to have this frank and and intimate dialogue around the subject. Wonderful. Let me read an uh, email. We just have another minute or so. Um, from uh, Robin Galloway from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. She says, my husband and I are definite opposites. And like Manisha, um, I'm the saver. We have separate everything, but each have certain bills, responsibilities to pay. Mm -hmm. Whatever is left is ours to handle how we wish. Mm -hmm. If my husband wants to buy something big, he asks me if it's okay, and I tell him as long as he can afford to pay for it. <laughs> Go for it. We have never fought about money in our 14 years marriage. Let me add another little personal story to it. My, my dad and mom worked out something that she would have an allowance. Not on uh -huh. all of their money was together, uh -huh. But it was a together they decided since she was doing most of the buying for mm -hmm. the family, mm -hmm. the clothes for mm -hmm. the kids, right. she had an allowance. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think about Robbins and um, my example I just gave? You know what? It, in keeping with the spirit of the title of the book, Get Financially Naked, I would call that a financial three way. And I highly <laughs> recommend it. Yours, mine, and ours. It, work, it works very well in all very seriousness. Good. How does she say that it was ours? I guess they have certain things. The, the, yeah. the certain expenses. I'm thinking about joint expenses okay, where house, that they've house yeah, that they've come to an agreement and, on okay. how they're going to contribute or, or pay for it. Very good. They discussed it. Excellent. Yes. Exactly. Let me say thank you to all of you. Uh, first of all, to Manisha Techor, right? Um, the author of Get Financially Naked. You can probably get it on Amazon. Absolutely. The, Barnes okay. & Noble, Borders, all the bookstores. Excellent. Stores. Wonderful. Um, and Rob Taub. Yes, sir. Um, a political humorist and author and all sorts of things. Dr. Archer. Uh, and the website again is drdalearcher.com. Dr. 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 Yes. Uh, and, you know, Tiffany from uh, hiphoprepublican.com. Very good. I'm Father Jonathan Morris. We'll see you here next week at this hour with News with a View. Take care and God bless you.